here before Don't wanna draw any attention To all the crazy things that I shouldn't mention All right, so we landed in Luton Airport now. Nicole is here as well, so we're first having some something to eat, getting it from prep, and then we're gonna take a taxi home because the ride is just gonna be much easier. But yeah, let's see what we can get for some breakfast. This can't be happening. All right, guys, I arrived in Mobile Arch uh, next to where my gym is, and I've got six clients today still um, even though we just arrived more or less so it's like two o'clock and at 2 30 it starts until nine o'clock so this doesn't leave me any time to train today which is a bit of a bummer um, I might need to yeah I mean it's just what it is the gym closes at, at nine so I don't have any time which is really not ideal but yeah so first off is heading over to get some food and here's India <laughs> Alright guys, it's time to put on the sunglasses Okay, well, at least I need to put them on and we're going to Kensington now because that is where I've got my next client and it says it is something like I think 24 degrees today so that's pretty neat now there's a topic I want to talk about today which um, remember we agreed on I talk about a topic which is important to the actor getting fit and one of that will be that I first of all need to make sure you guys can hear me right so the topic is gonna be how do you manage to stay on track so how do I do that with my clients and basically what we do when we say stay on track is the goal is getting bigger putting on some muscle size so the training principle we are talking about today is called progressive overload progressive overload basically means that over time you increase the amount of weight you're lifting so there's progression in your workouts progression means you go higher and higher over time but then the question is how do you know when to progress so what's the best rule of thumb and I'm going to share how I do this and there are probably many ways of doing it but let's say you start a lifting regime the thing you do is you agree on a certain set reps and weight level and that can be different for anyone so someone who's a beginner it's gonna be different to someone who's advanced, someone who's pro in terms of rep ranges and uh, sets you're gonna be doing. Let's say we're going for a powerlifting approach, meaning like a mix of hypertrophy and strength. Then what I normally do is I go for a working set. So three working sets of a target of six reps. So six times you wanna lift a certain amount of weight then the way we progress would be, let's say you deadlift 100 kilos for six times, three sets in a row. If you hit perfect form and you get the actual deadlift right, so you get it off the floor, everything is fine, for six times, for three sets in that one workout, you're good. Then you do that one more workout. So the next time, let's say you did that on Monday, and then on Friday, let's say you hit it again, and you manage to hit that target again, then I would increase the weight by let's say 2.5 or 5 kg depending on which lift it is and, and so on and so forth. And then you do that again because what will happen then is you increase your weight and as you then start lifting or if you then go for the exact same, so everything stays the same, three sets, A, six reps, but you increase the weight from 100 to 105 kg. Let's say on the next training when you do deadlifts with 105 kg, you manage to Let's say lift in the first set, you, you, you hit six reps. You're like, my God, I'm really strong. Then in the second set, you managed to hit five. And in the, in the third set, you managed to hit four times. So you can see that your strength decreased because the weight increased. And that's normal. So what you then do is you keep pushing until you then again with 105 kg are able to do two workouts in a row six reps for three sets that's how I measure 
progressive overload and that's just an example for for the deadlift and you can take that approach to any sort of lift you want if it's a biceps curl if it's bench press if it's squatting it doesn't really matter you can use that as a measure yeah i hope that was kind of clear if you didn't get it just listen to this again because it's it's pretty simple in a nutshell uh, how progressive overload works now here's the other thing alrighty so let's talk about how do you progress when you are learning a skill based movement so you're not in the gym where progressive overload is pretty simple like I just explained you've got a couple of measures you you can play around with it's your weight your rep ranges your sets your tempo the pause in between your sets you can play around with all these these little indicators which make up your training or now when we talk about a skill based training like uh, let's say you want to learn a kick or a somersault or a handstand or something like that then it's a bit different because obviously the measure of success is uh, not how much weight you're pushing but it, it works pretty similar so what you do is you actually use the actual movement let's take a handstand and I'm linking a video up here where you can see how I break down a handstand and what steps you have to take so what you'll be doing is let's say there are five steps in terms of learning a handstand and that's your progression so you do step one then you do step two three four and five is the handstand that's how you would progress doing a handstand it sounds pretty simple but now the other thing is what else you can do is instead of just doing that motion of the handstand let's say you're lacking in shoulder strength or the opening of the shoulder while you do handstand so you know when you swing up and then you need to get all the way up into the handstand there might be a bit of weakness in the shoulder strength and in the last workout I did you might have seen me taking the, the bar like the 20 kilogram bar and I was pushing it over my head I wasn't even sure if I was filming that or not but what I'm trying to say is you can actually use different weight exercises to strengthen certain areas of your body specifically to that movement which you're about to learn let's say the handstand right you, you want to make sure that your, your shoulder strength is on point and stuff like that the other thing is when it comes to movement based progression is also to have someone have an outside opinion and, and look at you how you're doing or you film yourself and then review that whole video with someone who knows what is the right thing to do because video learning in terms of movement training is so so important that will save you so much time and in our times right now when I went to uni that was like 10 or 15 years ago it wasn't really you know you didn't have your phone with you and you were easily able to take a video of you you had these camcorders and stuff and it was a bit more difficult not everyone had one because they were really expensive nowadays there's no excuse because everyone has a freaking phone and can basically film themselves while they do exercise and it's so cool because you can get instant feedback of the exercise you're doing and you can sort of compare it with a perfect model of the actual exercise for example that's also how you learn but the problem is if you're a beginner and you just look let's say you do a somersault backwards or forward you film yourself and you land on your ass and then you know you look at the video and you you might not know why so you need an expert looking at the video telling you that's why because you first have to jump up and then tuck later you have to use your arms and catch your knees behind your your turning point and stuff like that like little things which you might not have known because you wouldn't have seen it as you're not an expert in it so that's my recommendation of how to progress when you do certain skill-based exercises anyway i hope that gave you a bit of insight and a bit of learning of how to progress in the gym and outside the gym i don't need any food because i ate so many little flies on the way i got my protein for the day oh, man. i can't really see them but i definitely have a couple in my in my throat all right now we're gonna go shopping to waitrose which is one of the more well, upper class shops here in the uk I had a laugh about this the other day. I don't want to diss anyone. I don't get this in the wrong part of. It's nothing compared to German supermarkets. German supermarkets are so much cleaner and have better food. But anyway, I mean, this is how it is, right? Every part of the world will have different sort of supermarkets. But then, for example, uh, was it Whole Foods? Is the best supermarket and 
I missed the spot I want to go to. Yes, here it is. The best coconut water in the world. And we're actually going to take two of them. Nicole will thank me for that. Just put them on to see. Got them on my scooter as we're traveling through Waitrose shopping. I guess this is boring for you, so I'll see you later. Yo guys, today was really an eventful day. Uh, eventful in a scary way because you've seen the last footage was me being in Waitrose and I was sitting. I didn't video it because I was I was too shocked to be honest. Just next to me, literally like five meters away, someone got stabbed. Like literally two guys came running in and attacked the other guy. There was blood all over the place, all over the floor. It was like super crazy. And I was like, I've been in a shock to be honest. I mean, I was sitting right in the corner, tucked away behind the desk, so they couldn't really reach me, but... Yeah, what should I say? You know, London isn't a safe place, what everyone says, because Kensington, where I was uh, for my clients, I was just actually getting, uh, you know, like you see, I got some coconut water and some something to eat, ready to, to go out. And this happened, I just saw this guy fall into the wagons, like these, you know, the shopping carts. He fell into it and his friend grabbed him and says, we need, to, we need to run out, blah, blah, shit like that. And now it's all over the place. If you type in waitress into Twitter, you're gonna see, I mean, if you're not in the UK, you probably need to type in Waitrose UK or whatever. You're gonna see this stabbing shit going all over the place. <clears throat> yeah. So I was a bit in a shock, that's why I didn't film anything else today. And I'm really sorry that I didn't film the workout or anything. But yeah, I'm fine. If anyone worries. But that yeah, was a bit of a bummer. Anyway, I hope you guys are safe. Um, it's a strange world we're living in, to be honest. It's, you know, we all we take security for granted. You know, if you don't live in a Western civilized world, corruption and shit like that is normal. But we get this stuff now more and more real. Because, I mean, if you hear about a stabbing somewhere and you haven't been involved yourself, it doesn't really matter. You're like, yeah, well, whatever, this guy got stabbed, this guy got shot. But if you're sitting next to something like that and you actually, the blood was... You know when I filmed my scooter, right? I showed you that little screenshot of a scooter. The blood literally spat all the way next to my scooter. So that's how close I was to this. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. I'm just... Worried, to be honest. Anyway, that's the end of the vlog, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow, hopefully with a bit of a more cheerful note. Take care of yourselves, stay safe, do some martial arts hopefully to be able to defend yourself. Fucking hell man, this is London.